all right ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the channel guys today we have a toronto raptors video for you if you enjoy this video be sure to hit that like button hit that sub button raptor nation you guys have been blessing these videos here in training camp if you guys enjoy this video and you wouldn't mind hitting that like button if we could reach 150 likes on today's video that would be awesome also getting close to eight point one five k so any new subscribers thank you guys so much i got you covered with raptors content the entire season i wanted to make this video uh for a couple of different reasons number one i wanted to debate slash discuss the idea of goron possibly staying with the toronto raptors the entire season and with that being said i think it goes i think something that just a lot of raptors fans haven't even thought about is the fact that Goran will be one of the most consistent and reliable players on opening night right you're missing Pascal Siakam Kyle Lowry is gone Goran is 35 years old he has been on various different teams different personalities different coaching staffs different winning teams losing teams different playoff runs Goran's been through it all he has seen and been through it all I think it's interesting that he is on this roster because to me if you ask me he's probably going to finish a lot of the games I think it's something that I tried to not really like I don't know if I, I, I didn't want to admit it or if I didn't want to even process it or think about it. I'm not sure what it was at first. I think it really was just Goran's like out of context comments that really threw me off for a little bit. But now after training camp, after media day, he looks ready to go with the Raptors and Toronto looks excited to have him. So having this reliable old veteran, I think Gary Trent Jr., like I, if we're being honest, if there's one player in the starting lineup that I'm not worried about, but it might be a weak link, it might be Gary Trent Jr. I think you could say the th same thing about Ken Birch, but I think it's mainly Ken Birch and Gary Trent Jr. Now, he's got a lot of expectations on him. They just paid him a fat contract, and he's pretty much going to be a winner because it's like he'll be here for two years getting paid nicely and then he's got a player option and it's like oh okay so Gary Trent Jr. as good as much potential as I think he has you know with that being said I, I love my Duke guy I think Gary Trent Jr. is a very talented basketball player but for consistency and winning all I'm saying is Goron might actually be the best route to end games and I've seen a couple of videos about this I've seen a couple of articles about this I mean so pretty reliable consistent three-point shooter 37 and a half percent oh he's good in the pick and roll he's a good finisher he's great at forcing uh different rotations and getting mismatches I think closing games for the beginning of the season especially if this starting five is struggling to score the ball offensively without Pascal in that lineup, I would not be shocked at all if Goran is... I, I would not be shocked at all if he finishes the games. In fact, that brings me to the next point where it's like, I think Raptors fans will soon come to find out that Goran might be the best... Like, he might just be the best option to finish games too. So... It brings you to even just like the possibility of what if what if the Toronto Raptors were and the thing is is it's not even that far fetched as we all know they were like what the third or fourth seed, I think it was the fourth seed before COVID and injuries last season. Two years ago, same thing. Like this team is very capable, but let's say the Raptors were to get off to an incredible start to the season. Incredible start. So I'm not sure, I don't remember exactly when the trade deadline is, but let's say just after 50 games, let's say the Toronto Raptors are 35 and 15. So let's say they're 35 and 15. Goron isn't doing anything like crazy spectacular statistically. You know, maybe he's just putting up 
15, 3, and 3 every night, shooting 40% from 3, just kind of statistically doing his job. But let's say he was closing every game, helping contribute to wins. If you're 35 and 15, you're definitely either a 1 or a 2 seed. So I think if that were the case, I think the Raptors would have a, a much more difficult situation on their hands as opposed to, I think, what maybe not everyone is saying, but a lot of Raptors fans are saying, like, nothing too crazy, but definitely better than last year, definitely making the playoffs, maybe around that, like, 6-9 to nine seed in the playoffs with that play-in tournament. In that situation, 100% trade Goran Dragic doesn't fit your future timeline. It's not like you're about to win a championship. Go ahead, get as much value as you can. All I'm trying to see is I want to hear from you guys, Raptor Nation, down below in the comments. If your team's 35 and 15 and you're a top one or two seed in the East, it's about to be trade deadline. Goran is very much significantly improving your team. Do you say screw it? We already got Precious Achua. He's here for the long term. Maybe he's having a good season. Maybe he's having a good statistical season off the bench. Maybe even getting a couple of starts here and there. Putting up good stats when he is getting those starts. Do you just kind of say like, all right, Kyle Lowry didn't have to do that for us. We got Precious Achua. We also got Goran who is demonstrating his value right now. It might be a little bit more of a shorter term play. Kind of a year contract. You know, I mean, it that's what it literally is, a year contract. Who knows? Who knows? And like I said, this is just one of those kind of crazy hypotheticals because I every article I read, it's like Raptors still looking to trade Goron. Maverick still looking to trade for Goron. It's just there's so many rumblings going on out there, and I'm not too huge. To just be honest, I'm not too huge on the trade packages for Goron. Like, it's not like they're getting future first-round picks. The best trade scenario I've seen with Goron included in it is Moses Brown. But you're also getting Trey Burke, who doesn't help you. And you're also getting Dwight Powell, who doesn't, like, as far as long-term help. And either of those guys help you. So... It's just food for thought, something to think about here. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, hit that sub button. Like I said, Raptors Nation, thank you guys so much. Um, we're getting close to 8.2K subs, getting close to 8.15. So if you're new here, hit that sub button, hit that like button. It is greatly appreciated. All my links to my socials are down below. Peace.